Hey, good morning, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Happy Wednesday to all of you. Now, I'm going to give you the updates not only on this cold front coming through because now it's trending on Euro and GFS that this is going to do a double bounce for the cold front and go even deeper into our country as well as the update on the tropics because Euro, GFS, Canadian, they're all showing that we need to keep our eye on this next wave coming in. Now, if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. My name is Mark, and I am a long-range forecaster, so you always hear of the weather news here first. Sorry for the no upload for yesterday, guys. If you went to my community tab, remember, always check my community tab if you don't hear from me in the morning. My video card actually took a dump, and that's on my main computer with all my software. I was actually editing the food video and it took a dump so i got one ordered but i didn't want to wait on that so i went out and got one also yesterday so now we have two so this should not happen again but i did post your highs and your lows expected for the rest of this week according to national weather service and just to give you the latest news on what's going on with celia it is strengthening back up to a tropical storm and expected to be a hurricane once again but of course no threat to anybody. I just thought we'd mention it. This thing is strengthening right back up to a hurricane again. So an update on our tropical waves. Right now we have two. The one in the Bay of Campeche, which really isn't doing anything. Just bringing rainfall to Central America and Mexico. As well as the second one, which is weak right now. But the one right after it is the one that we should show a little concern about. So the first one, we have the axis of a tropical wave near 67 west and 18 north. And it is southward, of course being suppressed by this dust and that would put that right about here getting into the eastern caribbean and moving west but you can see how broad and how weak this wave really is it is very weak very broad and is getting a lot of shear on it as well as is coming to the western caribbean we have a trough coming through the gulf of mexico all the way down to central america high pressure is still dominant and this thing is very weak it is bringing some rainfall towards honduras though plus we have the tropical wave near 94 west from 22 north southward of course and it's moving west 10 to 15 knots and there is moderate convection in that one from the southwest gulf west of the wave axis and that puts that right here in the southern end of the bay of campeche like we've been knowing about that wave is going to move west southwest but at the same time, you can see how it's going on a weakening trend as it's going towards Mexico. So it is a smaller wave right here in the southern end of the Bay of Campeche, bringing rainfall, no threat to anybody, just rainfall. But this next wave that we have out here in the MDR, the main development region, is still the one that we need to show a little concern about. Now, it could go west, it could go north into the Gulf of Mexico that is trending on GFS and Euro. It could also go around the Bermuda High and swing to the southeast of the U.S. So we definitely need to keep our eye on that one. Plus, you can also see not only the wave that we need to keep our eye on, we still have two more strong waves coming off the coast of Africa about to hit our MDR. And that is the one that the Canadian model is showing that will eventually strengthen up after it gets away from this dust, gets into our Eastern Caribbean, and will start making a northward push somewhere towards Jamaica. Now let's get into the data, guys, because this cold front coming through is going to produce a front-induced low pressure system, possibly in our Gulf of Mexico, and form up real quick, real close to home. So we need to keep our eye on this. So as you look at your AO, your Arctic Oscillation from the Euro, you can see how we get in that cold dip of that cold front that I did show you about. And it is going to make a second dip in the beginning of the month as well. So we're going to get some cooler air coming in. We're going to go on a little bit of a warm up and then come right back into some cooler air. And the GFS is showing the same thing. We're going to come into this cool front coming in. And then we're going to go on a little bit of a warm up and then right back into this cooler air coming down. And this is what's showing can produce a front induced low pressure system in our Gulf of Mexico. So let's look at the update that we got today from the MJO, which lets us know about these cold fronts before it goes into the data, way before it comes out into those model deterministics that you look at. And you can see that this update is from the 22nd all the way to the 6th. So it has come out today. So as you get in that cold front that's leaving out the northeast, 8 being the east coast, 7 being your west coast, 1 being the MDR coming off the coast of Africa. 
that as we go into the late 20s, it's going to start swinging back around towards the West Coast. Now, as it swings around, it will bring some colder air to the upper Midwest. But once we get into the beginning of the month, we're going to start getting some cold air coming from the West Coast, coming all the way towards our Deep South. It won't be no freezing temperatures for the Deep South. It will be the overnight lows in the 60s and 70s, which will be a good relief. But it will bring 40s and 50s to the upper Midwest, also the Ohio Valley, and swing up to the northeast. And then it's going to park right over the northern Atlantic after that. So it is coming right back in into our country and even deeper for the beginning of July. So let's go into the updates on the cyclone locations according to the GFS, also according to the Euro. And you can see as we continue to go through that that surface low does go out to the northeast. I will show you some more data on that. While it breaks off into another piece of energy that goes off, weakens down and goes towards the Gulf of Mexico as this next wave goes towards Honduras. But after that, we start getting that wave that's in the MDR start making its way towards the Eastern Caribbean as well as what's in the Gulf of Mexico. It starts getting the chances to spin up and start to strengthen up especially by the 3rd and the 4th of July. You could be looking at a strong surface low in the Gulf of Mexico. Also by that time this wave could have possible locations going northward into the Eastern Caribbean and start coming towards the U.S. around the same time. Now this could swing around this Bermuda high pressure. If it expands out, which I'm showing in the precipital water that it does expand out, it could push it further to the west. So as you look at the update with the Euro, you can see all the possibilities for this next wave. And one even shows that it could go towards Honduras, just like this first wave is headed towards as well. But the more than likely outcome is all these ensembles all off by themselves headed to a westward to a northwestward path. Now it's still a little too far to be sure because it's widely spread out that it could either go around the Bermuda High, head towards the Bahamas, towards the southeast of the U.S., or even go into our Western Caribbean and go into our Gulf. And you can see the outcomes. It could either go towards Florida, go towards the Yucatan, go towards Louisiana, or head towards the southeast. So it's still too far to be sure, but it's being seen by both guidance models of the Euro and the GFS. So when you check with the Euro and see your probabilities of at least a tropical depression, you see you get the one off the east coast, as well as that next wave that we're looking at in the Eastern Caribbean does head towards Honduras and Central America as that next wave comes in the MDR. So you can see it does head towards the Gulf of Mexico and start strengthening up to a chance for a system to form up as that system comes into the Eastern Caribbean and starts making that northward push. And you can also see it starts weakening down as it makes that northward push because you have all this high pressure that's going to be reaching way into our Western Caribbean as it heads towards that. But the possibilities are westward, northwestward or more of a west northwest push so it's still too far to be sure but euro is showing that there is many possibilities that this wave could go to now the canadian model has been steady on a north to a northwest push and you can see it right here about to come off the mdr get into our caribbean by the 28th and it heads north to a northwest push once it gets into our caribbean and so far strengthening up all the way towards a hurricane right in front of Jamaica and that is by July 2nd and if that were to happen as you look at the winds from the Canadian model which is a great model usually the Ural and the Canadian agree most of the time when they don't agree with the GFS but as it comes in you can see all the winds is all north side loaded on this storm so if that were to happen it would put some strong winds on Jamaica as well so I will keep updating on this just so we know the track of this next wave. Now, as we look at our ensemble members probabilities from the GFS as well as the Euro, you can see as we go towards the 30th, we get our group of probabilities as we come into the Caribbean. And it does make that west to northwest push according to the GFS and probably go right by southern Puerto Rico, as well as a probability of a surface low growing into our Gulf of Mexico. 
But you can see how it starts heading around this Bermuda high, which directs it right on around. And the probabilities are that when that high pressure does expand out, it pushes back to the west and it could go somewhere towards the Bahamas. And this is also seen by the EPS members, which is your ensemble prediction system. This is your medium to long range for the euro it also shows that these members could spread out to multiple possibilities that's why i said we got to keep an eye on this because the euro is showing multiple locations where this could swing it could swing out and be a fish storm but also could be going west because that high pressure is going to expand out towards our gulf and push this further to the west and it's showing louisiana as a possibility as well so Euro and GFS are both agreeing on multiple locations, but maybe a possibility for this to get into our golf as well. So we just need to stay updated. It's still a little too far to be sure. You see how widespread the possibilities are at this point. But as you look at the update with the NASA satellite, you can see our dust does keep all this suppressed to the west, southwest. Then as that next wave starts to brew up, it does keep it towards Honduras, Central America, and that's where all that precipitation does keep flowing as it comes through towards Honduras. But you can also see that right when you get around the 29th, behind this little puff of dust, that we do have some moisture, some tropical wave that will form up and come towards the Eastern Caribbean and going west. And it does make that north, northwest push. And when you look for the whole basin where you have your MDR, which is your one, then you have your eight right here, just like the Madden Julian oscillation. You can see you have multiple waves. You have one right here, as well as one about to form up before this big high pressure of dust is chasing it. And you can see that the dust just swallows up that first wave, suppresses it to the south, southwest, but it pushes everything together on that one in the front. So it eats the one that's in the back, so we won't have two, but the one in the front is the one we need to think about. Because as we look at the Canadian model, you do see all this precipitation does keep going towards Honduras, Central America. But once we get that next wave coming through, it does have multiple waves, as you can see. But as you keep going, you can see that that first one does get a little swallowed up, but it continues to form up with the one in the front and it heads to the north northwest with all of that and it is showing sometime around the beginning of july that that will start headed somewhere towards jamaica i will keep you updated and you can see with the wind gust that it stays weak all the way through the mdr but once it gets away from that dust it starts strengthening up as it comes into our caribbean making that north northwest push and so far is showing up to 80 miles per hour wind gusts. So, so far it is showing a strong tropical storm, potential low grade hurricane. Now this could easily swing around this high pressure on this Bermuda high. It could easily get suppressed if this high pressure expands out more and go the same path that we're looking at now on this first wave towards Central America and Mexico. You can see right here on 15, that it shows it by June 30th that while that first wave is going into the Central America towards Nicaragua, that we could get an upper level low in the northern Gulf of Mexico while we get in that wave coming into the Caribbean. And you can see not only does the wave start to dissipate according to the GFS, but the one in the Gulf of Mexico starts strengthening up real quick to home and coming back on shore. So not only the wave that we have now, we need to keep an eye out on this one in the Gulf of Mexico. You can see how the high pressure expanded out. So it stopped it from strengthening, but it forms up a little upper level low as it swings around that Bermuda high and loses its strength. The one in the Gulf of Mexico forming real close to home is a little concerning, but it could bring some rainfall to those of y'all that really, really need it. So hopefully it don't form up anything strong. Hopefully it stays like a group of disorganized thunderstorms because within the next five days, you can see how the precipitation goes towards Nicaragua on that first wave. And there's nothing over here according to Euro or the GFS. Now the GFS takes this wave a little more Western in the Gulf of Mexico. And as you look at the precipitation, 
from five days out. So within five days, Texas, you don't have anything. But from five to 10 days, when this wave starts acting up, it could bring up to an inch of rainfall, maybe a little over an inch for Houston. So some of y'all that do need rainfall, as well as the south and the deep south. Could bring some rainfall for y'all as well. And that's according to the GFS as well as the Euro. The Euro takes it a little lighter where how much of an area it goes into Texas. But it shows there is a possibility that Houston could get over an inch, inch and a half. And GFS is showing inch and a half as well. So this next energy that comes into the Gulf of Mexico and splits from this surface low that we're dealing with in the northeast could bring some more rainfall to people that really need it. Now, so far, as far as a rainfall for Jamaica or Puerto Rico, please do not worry yet. That it is only the Canadian model that is showing that possibility of that coming towards y'all or making that north, northwest push. Because according to the GFS and the Euro, that you don't have a lot of rainfall coming within the next 10 days. Mind you, within the next 10 days is rocks when it's gonna start coming into our Eastern Caribbean, so it's still a little too early. Anything past that, we all know, will change some. So I will keep you updated, but so far there's no threat. It's only the Canadian model that is showing that. So as we look at the cyclone possibilities, as far as what's gonna happen in the Northeast, you can see according to the GFS that it is going to curve out and go out into the northern Atlantic. A piece of energy is going to come off and go towards the south and the deep south while that spins away and goes away from the U.S. But if you look at the Gulf of Mexico, you can see there's a chance for a quick spin up right around the beginning of July. July 2nd, a quick spin up could just come out of nowhere out of that surface low, strengthen up real strong and start headed towards the landfall so the only reason we need to watch that is because it spins up so quick so close to home but it is going to bring some cooler temperatures especially on that second swing in the beginning of the month so you can see as we keep on going you can see that we started getting this cool front coming down just a little bit as it swings back towards the west coast for the beginning of the month for that deeper push and you get some colder temperatures on the northwest for these coming days as it keeps on going, all this heat keeps on building. So we're still going to be in that heat until it comes back. But once we go into Saturday, Friday and Saturday, the cold temperatures will start coming back in the northwest. This is going to move through the upper Midwest as you go through Saturday. As you go through Sunday, it's going to continue in the upper Midwest. And as you go through Monday, it's going to go to the Ohio Valley. Now this will go out to the northeast and you'll feel some temperatures but it's gonna swing back around for the beginning of the month. So as we go to that little bit of warm up, cause remember it's got a cold front warm up and then a cold front, a little bit of a warm up, and then it swings right back around again. So you're gonna get the cold air coming right back. And this time it's gonna go a little bit deeper and bring in cooler temperatures to more people. This is by the second, by July 3rd, it's gonna start coming in a little bit more. By July 4th, you got some even colder temperatures in the upper midwest as you go through the fifth is going to start affecting the ohio valley as well now this will bring cooler temperatures to the south as well you're not going to be as cold as everybody up here but you won't be overnight lows be in the 80s or even the 90s it could be the 60s or 70s as you go to the sixth and it goes up to the northeast as well so you do have a colder spill coming deeper into our country as we go into the beginning of July. So as we take a look from the west side of the US, you got some cooler temperatures for today, and it's gonna continue for a little bit, but you are in that warm up. You can see the 100 degree temperatures coming back for the central US once again. But once it starts swinging back around, then you're gonna start feeling colder temperatures again. This is for Friday. As you go towards Saturday, it's gonna start moving a little more towards the east. And then as you go to Sunday, it's going to continue moving a little more towards the east for your overnight lows. Some very cool temperatures coming in. And then as you go through Monday, it's going to be a little more on the eastern U.S. while you're getting back on that warm up once again on the west coast. But as you go towards the end of the month, the west coast is really going to start feeling these temperatures overnight again. This is on the 30th. Then as you go towards the 1st, you're going to feel them again. Nice little cool temperatures overnight. Now the West isn't going to have it as long as the central U.S. 
or the East Coast, but you will have overnight lows on the second as well, getting a little bit cooler. And as you go towards the third, it's going to start moving away. And then for the July 4th, you're going to have some nice overnight lows, but it's going to warm right back up once again for that day. So I can show you this best first from the central U.S., then the East Coast, because it's going to come in more for the central U.S. So your hottest day for this week is going to be on Friday as all this heat builds way up over 105 degrees for a lot of people. And that is some very hot temperatures. But as the night comes in, it's going to start cooling off and this cooler air is going to start moving in from the upper Midwest. Then as you go through your Saturday, you're going to get hot again, but not as bad, but it's still hot. But as you go through your Saturday night lows into your Sunday, this is where it comes in from the upper Midwest bringing people a lot of 50s, keeping y'all in the 70s at this point. But as you go through your Monday, heat's right back up again. But as you go through the night, then it's going to reach way down into the U.S. And it's going to start bringing a lot of 50s to a lot of people, even the 40s up here for northern Minnesota. Then as you go through your Tuesday, it's going to move a little bit further to the east. Now remember, this is the first spill as it's going around. But once it gets to that west coast in the beginning of the month, then you're going to really have your cool front that y'all kind of looking for. As you go through Wednesday, it's going to affect the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. Then as you go through your Friday, it's going to go out to the northeast. So as we go into the first, a cold dip of the cold air on Friday, but as we keep on going, you can see that on the second, it comes a little bit lower and it's going to keep coming lower. The oscillation shows a good lowering of this cold air. As you go through the third, it's going to continue. But once you get to the fourth, then it's going to start dropping down a little further into our U.S. And it's going to put you all in the 70s, the low 70s, a little bit colder for the upper Midwest. But once you go into the fifth, that's when it does its little deep dip, just like the oscillation showed. And y'all going to be in the 60s to the very low 70s for the deep south. So a lot of y'all going to be in the 60s overnight low as this passes by while it puts Ohio Valley in the 50s. This is by July 5th. And once you go into the 6th, it's going to move a little bit further to the east and bring some more cooler temperatures once again in the 60s, maybe the low 70s for a lot of people. And you will feel it on the east coast as well as you go into July 3rd. You have a good little warm up, but once the overnight comes in, it starts dipping in this cool air, starts making its way in for the night of the 4th. Warms up on the 4th for y'all, so you have some good warm temperatures for July 4th. Why they're cooler, this is their highs for the day is going to be in the 60s. But as it comes in through the nightfall, then it's going to bring these cooler temperatures on down for everybody for July 4th, the morning of July 5th. And everybody's going to be in the 60s to the very low 70s. Even Florida going to be overnight lows is going to be in the 70s. While everybody else is in the 50s. And you're really going to feel this cool down as it shifts to the northeast for Wednesday on the 6th. Bringing cooler temperatures once again. I mean 60s and very low 70s like 71 to 74. That's a lot better than the 80s where you're really feeling the mugginess of that humidity. So from the second all the way to the fifth, y'all really going to feel this second bounce of this cold front coming in. And that is the update on the tropics as well as this cold front. We did get our update on our Madden Julian oscillation today. And it still confirms that this second bounce in the beginning of July is still coming, guys. So overnight lows will be very nice. You still will be a little warm throughout the day, but it is going further and further south. So I hope this gives y'all some relief. As well as the possibility for this energy to break off from this coastal low on the East Coast and go into the Gulf of Mexico. Really not showing a lot of threat. I don't expect that to ramp up too much, even though it is showing a few possibilities. What I'm excited about is it could bring y'all the rainfall y'all need. So I hope that y'all do get it for Texas, for the Deep South. I do hope y'all do get that rainfall needed, especially for your crops and everything that needs a lot of that rain. God bless every single one of you. Now today I want to read Ecclesiastes 3. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, 
A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart concerning the state of the sons of men, that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yes, they have all one breath. So that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. All go unto one place, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of the man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Amen. <laughs> God bless you all. May you have a very blessed and a very great Wednesday out there. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I do appreciate every single one of you. I will be here all day editing on that food video. So if you have any questions, do not stop to ask. Please ask me in the comment section below and I will answer any question you do have. I hope you all have a great day. God bless every single one of you and all power, all glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our father. And if you're in a bad time, don't sweat it. For everything has a season. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a very great day, everybody.